Hello, Michael Bull here with America's Commercial Real Estate Show. We're at the NER Conference and Expo in Chicago. We're here with Chad Curry. He's with CRT Labs, which is part of the National Association of Realtors. And he just came out of a presentation on improving indoor air quality. And Chad, I think it's something that's very important. I'm so glad you guys are, are talking about this and actually doing something about us. Talk to us about some of the things you uh, presented today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, indoor air quality is two to five times worse than outdoor air quality. It's just by the nature of all the things around us, right? And we spend about 90% of our time indoors. So what can we do to help improve that? And so what we're looking at is how plants can help. There's two reasons why plants matter for us. Uh, one is uh, that they are pleasing to look at and they actually make people feel better uh, when they're around them. But also, these plants that we're looking at specifically can uh, fix uh, with chemicals in the air, things like formaldehyde, benzene, trichloroethylene, and all those things come from uh, all the things we have around us, uh, solvents, cleaners, uh, the, the tables, desks, uh, chairs, all that stuff. So it's important to think about how we can do this naturally and pleasing and in, a, in a pleasing way. So. And talk to us about some of the looks in these things that we can do in some of our office buildings and, and, and commercial spaces. Yeah, so there's a number of uh, different uh, ways to take care of this. Uh, first, I would have the conversation with a plant provider about what plants they would recommend to help remove certain chemicals and, and make sure they're familiar with the NASA study. Uh, you can find it on just certain NASA study air plants. Uh, you can do all sorts of arrangements and colors. That's the beautiful thing about this. Uh, you don't just have to have green. You can have greens and reds and, and darker shades of, of those colors, but also flowers as well. Uh, uh, chrysanthemums are one of the plants. Uh, so you can really make something very pleasing. Uh, I've seen people do logos sometimes of their companies in the walls, so it's mm -hmm. very exciting. Uh, but also, these can be uh, very low maintenance. You can have self-watering systems. Uh, there are freestanding plant walls that you can get that are self-watering. Looks like a little shelf that's filled with water, and it'll it'll regulate based on the amount, the need of water uh, for the plants. So a lot of options out there. Ours and our we built one into a cubicle wall. Ours we have to hand water, and it's not a big deal. It's one time a week. Uh, we just go through, make sure there's enough water in each one, and we're good. Yeah. And talk to us about indoor farming. You were talking about yeah. that earlier. Yeah, so vertical farming and indoor urban farming is going to be a big trend in the next uh, five to 10 years. And in fact, um, you know, we were talking about autonomous vehicles in there. One of the things is we're going to need less parking spaces. So what do we do with those? So vertical farming uh, uses a process typically called hydroponics. Hydroponics essentially are uh, using LED lights tuned to the same wavelength as the sun to create photosynthesis for the plants. And on the backside, there's no soil. Water's being passed through with nutrient-rich water, the nutrients the plants need. The plants remove those nutrients and the water passes through. And they use about 97% less water than traditional agricultural methods, but it allows for fresh food. So a company called Plenty uh, just received $200 million in funding from Jeff Bezos, right? And they make vertical farms. He also just purchased uh, Whole Foods. So in the future, you can imagine you go into a Whole Foods, you actually see the plants growing on the wall, harvest what you want, weigh it, you pay per pound or ounce or whatever it is, and you go on your way, right? That'll so, be amazing. It's gonna be really amazing, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what else might we want to know about indoor air quality? What we can do about it? Because I think wellness in our space is gonna yeah. be a big thing moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's with the particulates. Uh, other things we can do is, as we understand how carbon dioxide builds up in our space, we can work to regulate that better. Um, you might have been in a meeting in a conference room where it feels very stuffy and you feel tired. Uh, it's not because it's a boring meeting, <laughs> it's because you're recycling air. You're breathing in CO2 over and over. So air exchange is a big thing. The well standard requires, uh, the well standard being about the health of the people in the building, it's a requirement of that that you have some type of air exchange for quick uh, air exchange to pull in fresh, o fresh oxygen. Uh, so people have uh, monitors where if it gets above 1200 parts per million of, of CO2, air's pulled in quickly to help freshen the room and help you feel more invigorated. And actually, you know, this is a, we don't realize it, but this actually affects productivity and how uh, uh, building sickness, you know, people get sick because of this. So having these types of air exchanges, looking at standards like well, uh, those are things you can do. Now, to have some more uh, CO2 removed, more plants, you know, I would say. And people, uh, I've had people here since they've seen our plant globe request more and more plants from us. So yeah. uh, they're very excited about that. Yeah, talk to us about this uh, plant globe. Oh, this yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, so we actually, um, IKEA, they have a lab called Space 10. 
and Space 10 designed plans for something called a plant glow. Uh, they call it a grow room, but they're from Sweden. They don't know what that means here, right? So we call it a plant globe. So plant globe, um, you cut out the pieces. We worked with a makerspace, a CNC milling machine to cut out all the pieces, uh, and we assembled it here. Uh, it took us about two hours to assemble. There are no screws, there are no nails, there's no uh, glue. It's all peg and groove um, put together. Very simple instructions. I was surprised at how quickly we were able to put it up. We were thinking maybe it's going to take us half a day or a whole day to put up. Two hours, two of us in two hours. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's cool. And we'll have a, if you're watching this video, you'll see it. If you're listening to uh, the podcast, uh, we'll put a link to the Globe and some more information. So, Chad, for our commercial real estate audience, uh, what else are you guys doing uh, in the lab that uh, might be interesting to these commercial real estate folks? Yeah, so I've talked about before doing pedestrian and vehicle counts. Um, as smart city um, platforms come online, that's those are two of the things they're going to be monitoring. How many people and how many vehicles. And they're not going to do it in a way, they're going to do it in a way, excuse me, that, that uh, has privacy in mind. Um, we're working with Sidewalk Labs, which is a uh, part of the Alphabet holding company, uh, which is Google. Uh, and uh, they are doing traffic in, in vehicle monitoring to understand how, uh, uh, pedestrian and vehicle monitoring, understand how people move about spaces, right? This is going to be really key and will add value to commercial spaces. So as an example, at NAR, we were monitoring pedestrian vehicle traffic in front of our building, and we were able to lease a space within two months of having that data. So uh, it's, very, it's very valuable data, and I would recommend if you have a commercial practice, you should consider having your own ways of doing this and not relying on the third parties to do this, because it's going to be big. It's actually going to help you reshape the way cities work. In reality. Right, and this technology is advancing, and the cost is coming down, right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the, um, I don't have the numbers on the cost for sidewalk yet because they haven't released it, but before we were paying about $60 per measurement point per month, which is not bad at all. I mean, that's, that's a very small cost, and we were using cameras off the shelf. Right, so that's not a that's not a, a big expense, and I think we can afford it in the commercial real estate industry. Right. Well, Chad, great information. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Michael. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much.